The 2023 Whipple Superchargers NMA World Finals had the most excitement that we've ever seen in the Tremec Stick Shift Shootout. The race took place in Bowling Green, Kentucky, September 29th through October 1st, but the excitement started weeks before the event. The previous Tremec Stick Shift Shootouts in 2023 had some interesting outcomes and bragging rights for the winner of this final shootout were at a premium. One contender for the top spot in this competition was faced with building a new engine just weeks before the race while the rest made tweaks and adjustments to make sure their cars were in top condition. Let's start with the event coverage by looking at the Tremec All-Female True Street Showdown. Competitors in this class follow the same rules as the regular True Street class, including a 30-mile street cruise. Immediately after the street cruise, competitors pull into the lanes for three consecutive rounds of passes down the drag strip. The overall winner, runner-up, and ET class winners are all determined by the average of the three runs. We had 19 entries with 17 making three successful rounds. Gabby Lujan of Miami, Florida scored her third overall win in this class for the year with an 8.838 second average. While Gabby has raced her father's car in the previous two competitions, this was her first race ever in her new car, a 1993 Mustang with a 9.200 average. Shifting our attention to the Tremec Stick Shift Shootout, we'll start with a huge field of potential qualifiers. There were more than 100 entries in the True Street and nearly half of them were stick shift cars. Qualifying rounds on Saturday saw our quickest ever qualifying ET for the Tremec Stick Shift Shootout. Mike Nihas clocked an average of 8.71 seconds. The field was cut down to the quickest eight cars based on their three run averages. And we realized another first. This was the quickest field ever for the Tremec Stick Shift Shootout with an average ETs ranging from Mike's 8.71 to Jeffrey McCool's 10.12 seconds. The eight qualifying cars were almost exclusively an Ohio versus Florida showdown with the exception of Dwayne Hickman from West Virginia. Who would you think are your top competitors here this weekend? <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of really fast stick shift cars here today. Mike Nehaas, Kyle Miller, Danny Watts over here, um, Jeff Smith, just to name a few. Got a, my buddy John Kinter that I know prep race with really on a every month basis. His car is really fast. That's for being a naturally aspirated car. Super excited to see what happens. Like I said, stick shift is about going A to B. First round elimination matches were determined by a chip draw. Robert Thompson with his 2001 Mustang faced off against Kyle Miller in his 2004 Mach 1. Robert treed Kyle on the starting line and took home the win with less than 11 thousandths difference in ETs. Next, Dan Adair and his 1987 Mustang GT put Dwayne Miller on the trailer. The matchup between Mike Nehas and Jeffrey McCool had the largest spread in qualifying ETs. Final pairing pitted Cobra against Cobra. Jeff Smith, who has won more Tremec stick shift shootouts than any other racer, got to leave first, and Dan Watts had to play catch up with a one-tenth staggered start. Dan pulled off a clean pass while Jeff had some mechanical issues, which cost him the win. In round two of eliminations, Mike paired off against Dan. Both made clean passes, but Mike passed Dan at the top end, illuminating the win light. In another relatively close match, Dan Watts bested Robert Thompson, earning his spot in the final round. And in the final round of eliminations, Dan would leave first based on his 9.51 ET average, and Mike would have to play catch up. With an eight tenth gap to close, Mike would need a perfect pass. But Dan maintained his lead all the way to the finish line, capturing not only his first Tremec Stick Shift shootout win, but his first ever win in any race. Congratulations, Dan Watts. I'm here with Dan Watts. Dan, you just got crowned Tremec Stick Shift shootout winner at the NMRA World Finals. How does that feel? You know, I know I've got a really dumb grin on my face, but this is actually the first event win I've ever had in my life. So to be at doing this for the last 15 years, you know, I've had more than enough trials and tribulations. So this is this is super bittersweet for me to be at this spot right now. That's awesome. Not only your first win, but first stick shift win as well. That's a Correct. that's great. Talk about how long you've had this car and things that you've done to it over the years. It, this is actually my second zinc yellow cover, but I got this car in 2012. I missed the first one that I had. Um, I've been through many renditions on this car. It actually started out as a ported stock blower with nitrous. Then we did a Lysham 3.3 blower. Then I picked up a sponsorship through Whipple Superchargers. I had a Gen 429, and from the Gen 429, then we stepped up to the Gen 5.3 liter. And from there, it's been nothing but forward progress. How about the Tremec Magnum 6 p When did you put that in? The Tremec Magnum, I think I've had that in the car probably the last six years. Hands down, one of the best modifications you can make to one of these cars. There's many guys in the 03 Cobra platforms that say, what's the best thing you can do to one of these cars? It's a Magnum, 100%, and it will take 
a massive amount of abuse. It's it's a very impressive transmission. And here we are, swinging through. So I, I can't say enough. I can't say enough how great Tremec's been for this car. Now you were racing against quite a few friends today. Talk about how that was, the, the good and the bad. Since the inception of this car, Jeff Smith and I have been social media buddies and we've gone back and forth. I've driven all the way to Florida to compete against him. And to tell you the truth, today was the first time that I beat him. So Jeff and I went first round against each other. Um, our dial-ins were actually within a tenth of a second of each other. I think I went a five or nine, 957 to his 959. I mean, we, we were duking it out. And the first pass, we were in a bit of a rush to get in the lanes. I forgot to let the air out of my tires. So it was a bit of a spin fest with 20 pounds of air in the back tires. But Jeff Smith first round was awesome. We were swinging it the whole way down the track till we got to the end. Then second round, I went against Robert Thompson in a silver uh, Mustang. And that was an awesome round. I think he had a 9.6 average and mine's 9.57. So again, we were door to door the whole way down the track. Third round, Mike Niehaus, I, I don't know how it worked out, but Mike Niehaus had an 8.45 or 8.57 average. He is a monster. He's been, he's a, he's a local Ohio boy like I am. So we've been in many events together. It's the first time we've ever gone against each other in a, in a final round. Right to the end, it was awesome. I, I was waiting for him to pass me up, but it just came down to traction driver error a little bit, gave me a little bit against him and couldn't reel it back in. But I'm, I'm so excited right now. I, I am on cloud nine. Well, obviously nobody gets here by themselves. Who would you like to thank? Who's helped you get here? Uh, main sponsors that are the biggest help here is Whipple Superchargers, Tremec Transmissions, G-Force 1320 axles, they've been huge, uh, Cometic Gasket, Metco, uh, Motorsports for all the pulleys and underdrives and everything that's on this car. They've been a huge help. Keltrak, Kelly Aiken at Keltrak just set me up with a new suspension. We got full coilers all the way around on the car. Without them and the support of my girlfriend at home that's watched me really spend too many hours in the garage working on this car. It's been it's been something to get where I'm at right now. Well again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next year.